Hi, I'm Devin Moore, your host for Humanity Rising's Race to Speak Up podcast and founder of Hashtag Race to Speak Up, an anti-bullying organization. The Race to Speak Up podcast is a place where we have open and engaging conversations about bullying prevention, how to be upstanders, and how we are making a positive change in our communities. So the question now is, how do you race to speak up? Hello, and welcome to the Race to Speak Up podcast. I'm your host, Devin Moore. I am very excited about today's guest. Her name is Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott is an activist, motivational speaker, author, educator, diversity, diversity trainer, and the creator of the Blue Eye Brown Eye Experiment. The Blue Eye Brown Eye Experiment is where she showed third graders what it's like to face discrimination based off of their eye color. The brown eyed children could drink from the water fountain, but the blue eyed children had to use paper cups. The change for the children was immediate. I had the pleasure of meeting Jane at the 2020 NAACP Town of Islip Legacy Gala. I was being honored for my bullying prevention work in the community and Jane was the keynote speaker. Welcome Jane, how are you today? All right, all right. Now let's first understand that what I do is not an experiment. If what I do when I create a microcosm of society in a boardroom, in a classroom, in a lecture hall, in my house on a virtual presentation, if that's an experiment, then what we have been doing with people of color, particularly Blacks and Native Americans in this country for the last 200 and some years is an experiment. It is unethical and illegal to experiment with someone without their knowledge or without their permission. If what I'm doing is an experiment, then what we have been doing for the last 200 years is an experiment, and we need to stop that. But what I do is not an experiment. I'm not trying to learn something from the people I work with. I'm trying to teach them something. There's a big difference. And, and number and another thing, I'm not a teacher. Teachers dispense facts and figures to get kids ready for the end of year testing or students of any kind. That is not what I do. I'm an educator. The word educator comes from the root duck deuce, which means lead, the prefix e, which means out, the suffix ate, which means the act of, and the suffix or, which means one who does. An educator is one who is engaged in the act of leading people out of ignorance. And make no mistake about this, the number one problem in the United States is not racism. The number one problem is the United States in the United States is ignorance about skin color and what it means. Only when we have educated people to the fact that there is only one race of people on the face of the earth and that people from Africa came to this continent between 20,000 and 10,000 years ago. And those are the people, the, the people we call Indians in this, on this continent are actually people from Africa whose skin, hair, and eyes got lighter as they moved farther and farther from the equator. It's the only reason that people who came from Italy or from Italy, Italy or, or Ireland or England or any other country are lighter skinned than those who are still living in Africa because our skins faded as we got farther and farther from the equator. Therefore, we are all members of the same race. And this is not this is not a guess on my part. This we can prove. We can prove it by having every person on the face of the earth trace their DNA back as far as they can trace it, and they will find whoever you are, wherever you came from, they will find a trace of DNA that came from Africa in their DNA because we all came from the same place. We are, we are where we are because those ignorant Melanotic, and melanotic is the word I use for black because black is not the truth. I can see the color of your skin. I can see where your skin stops and your hair begins. Your skin is not black. Your hair is decidedly black. So for you to call yourself black is totally ridiculous. And we're doing it only because during the Spanish Inquisition, Torquemada and his cohorts were killing people in order to bring them to Catholicism. They had killed a number of people who were Christians before they realized that they were killing Christians. Then they said, we've got to find another way to decide who deserves to die. And they set upon skin color. And they came up with the word white for lighter skinned people and black for darker skinned people. 
white in the dictionary means pure and good. Black in the dictionary means savage and evil. They set us upon a course of being opposed to one another. The chasm between whiteness and blackness is so great that we will never, we'll never bridge that until we stop thinking of ourselves as white or black. I'm not white. You can see the color of my skin and you can see the color of my hair and you can see the color of my shirt. Two of them are white. Skin isn't. My skin is not white. I am not a white person. I am a, my, I am a person who is a shade of brown because I am a descendant of those first brilliant people from Africa who managed without any means of modern technology to populate every landmass on the face of the earth. We need to think about that and the greatness of those people and get over the idea of whiteness and blackness. So I wanna ask you about your blue eye, brown eye, which set the stage for people, people's, uh, people opening their eyes. Can you tell us more about it? I copied the blue eyed, brown eyed exercise from Adolf Hitler. I was born the year Adolf Hitler and Franklin Roosevelt came to power. And one of the ways Adolf Hitler decided who would go into the gas chamber or who would be shot or who would be skinned and whose skin would be turned into lampshades. That was, happen that was happening from the time I was born until 1945. So from 13 years, 12 years, I heard my father ranting about what Adolf Hitler was doing. And later on, I read books like Mile 18 in which it describes how Hitler decided to do what he was doing. I learned from birth how ugly racism and bigotry are. And when I was one, and Martin Luther King Jr. was one of our heroes of the month in February in 1968, along with unfortunately, George Washington, who owned slaves, bought and sold people for money. Abraham Lincoln, whom we have found out lately, is part black, part white, and part Cherokee Indian. Nobody wants to admit that, but that's the way it is. Daniel Boone, who was famous for killing natives as he took over part of their land. And Davy Crockett, who died in the Alamo as he fought to take over part of Mexico's lands. Those were our heroes of the month in February. And I went into my, I was going home the night after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. I had the teepee under my arm because my students were going to learn the Sioux Indian prayer the next, Sioux Indian prayer the next day that says, oh, great spirit, keep me from ever judging a man until I walked a mile in his moccasins. When I walked in the, into my back door, the telephone was ringing. I answered the telephone. It was my sister. She said, is your television on? I said, no. She said, you better turn it on. I said, why? She said, because they shot him. I said, who did we shoot this time? Because we were in a shooting mood. We had already shot JFK. And we had already shot a whole lot of other people. So I turned on television and my sister said, when I said, who do we shoot this time? She said, Martin Luther King Jr. And that was, that was the moment in my life when I could no longer deny that I'm a racist, when I could no longer deny that I recognize racism when I see it, when I could no longer go along in order to get along, and I could no longer call myself an educator if I allowed my students at this point in time to continue to believe that there was something wrong with having skin of color and that it was all right to kill those people who did. I have never had a more instantaneous introduction to ugliness. And so I went into my classroom the next morning. I did what Hitler did. I separated my students according to the color of their eyes. And I immediately learned how I look to people of color because my brown eyed students became on that day, the kind of people that melanaceous, which means white people are in this country, arrogant, discriminatory, judgmental, unfair, egotistical, ignorant people. And they were exhibiting the behaviors that they had learned from people like me in their environment who are hired and supposedly trained to educate people out of ignorance. We hadn't done it yet. And I realized I hadn't learned what I needed to learn. So that day I learned how it feels to be on the receiving end of racism. I've never forgotten it. I'll never forget it. 
and I'll never allow it to happen to a person in my presence again, as long as I live. And I expect to live for a very long time because I'm going to keep on breathing until it's obvious that there are enough people in the United States of America to fight against racism so that I don't have to fight it anymore. But until we have those numbers, I'm going to keep on fighting against racism because it is based on an idea that came out of the Spanish Inquisition in the late 1400s, and it made no sense then, and it makes no sense now. We have killed millions of people because of our ignorance about skin color, and we'll continue to do it until we elect leaders who know the difference. We haven't done that yet. Jane, we, we really do need leaders who actually know how to enforce equality as opposed to the differences. No, no, we don't. No, we do not need leaders who know how to enforce equality. We need leaders who have been taught the three R's of rights, respect, and responsibility. And from preschool on, we have to teach our students that every person has, has the same rights and the right to be respected. And if you don't respect that person's rights, whether it's in the school room, whether it's in the hospital, whether it's in the delivery room, whether it's on the, on the street, whether it's on the highway, if you don't respect those rights of all those other people, you will be held responsible. And that's exactly what is happening with police forces in this country today. They have been taught that only certain colored people have rights. Melanaceous people have rights. Melanotic people do not. We have to re-educate our members of the police department. We, we don't need to defund them. We need to befriend them and educate them to the truth instead of allowing them to continue to act on what they believe, which is what they learn K through 12. What they learn K through 12, which we call education, was in fact indoctrination. We teach people from kindergarten on how to be good so-called American citizens. We forget that America is everything from the northernmost point of Canada to the southernmost point of South America. North America, Central America, and South America. All the people who are citizens of all the countries in those areas are Americans. But we in the United States are convinced that America is the 48 contiguous states, Alaska, Hawaii, and the islands off the southeastern coast of the United States. That is not all of America. So in the future, when you talk about this country, instead of calling it America, call it either US, USA, or the United States of America. The most important word in that title is the word united. And for four years, we have had a so-called leader who said he was going to make us equal. Young man, there is no way you and I will ever be equal. I will never be as tall as you are. I will never be as young as you are. I will never know what you know about being discriminated against on the basis of the color of your skin in this country. I don't have to be your equal in order to be granted equal treatment under the law. That's what the constitution promises us. It does not promise us equality. I don't want to be equal to a Donald Trump. I would have to go way backward to be equal to a Donald Trump, and he will never be equal to me. That isn't possible. He, is, he has done more damage to this country while being supported by the evangelical community. He has done more, more damage to this country than any president or any leader of any kind ever has done. And it's being done because the people who belong to the evangelical community will do it in the name of Christ. Denying while they're allowing it to happen and while they are contributing to it and while they are electing mayors and governors and boards of education on the basis of their Christianity, they don't realize that Hitler did the same thing. Hitler talked about religion and behaved in an immoral and irreligious way. That's exactly what the e evangelical people in this country are doing today in the United States of America. They are trying to divide this country into the believers in Jesus Christ and the people who believe in something else. It's time for us to say, this is what's happening. We're not going to tolerate it. 
if you're going to use religion to cover up your acts of ugliness, we're going to call you out every time you do it. And we've got to start calling them out and start rec make them recognize that we realize what's happening and we are not going to tolerate in the United States of America. What was your question? Did I answer it? Oh, yeah, you answered it a lot and beyond. I mean, and then going back to the three R's, the rights, respect, and responsibility is something that we definitely need taught in schools. I mean, I wasn't taught going back to my school. I went to predominantly white elementary and middle school. I was not taught about race. I was, the most they said was MLK, Martin Luther King, and that was it. Even then they don't oh, but you, know but, but wait a minute, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. You were being taught about race. Unless I'm very much mistaken, all the leaders, the discoverers, the inventors, the creators that you learned about were white males. That's Did you true. learn that Columbus discovered America? That's teaching racism. You need to realize that there were people from Africa here 10 to 20,000 years before Columbus was born. You have to realize that the people that Columbus and his cohorts called redskins were not red. They were people from Africa whose body, whose skin and, and eyes and hair changed and changed color as a result of their being exposed to less sunlight. You were taught racism from day one in the public, private, and parochial schools in this country. We don't have to say we're going to teach racism in this community to do it. All we have to do is teach as though white males invented and did everything that was good on the face of the earth. And we have to, con we have to refuse to admit to you that only 15 to 18 percent of the population of the earth is classified as white. Did you know that? I did not. 15 to, oh, of course you didn't, because you aren't allowed to know that. Because if you know that, then you can say to the Proud Boys, look, fools, we're, we've all, you folks, you melanaceous people have already been the minority group numerically for two, 250 years, for longer than that, for 10,000, 20,000, 300,000 years. We have always been in the minority and we are minority, we are going to have smaller and smaller numbers as we are exposed to more and more sunlight because of climate change. More and more melanaceous people are going to die because they don't have enough melanin in their skin to protect their cells from the rays of the sun. So you need to realize that the proud boys who are proud because they're white and, be, and they're saying, you will not replace us. It won't be difficult to replace the proud boys because they're out in the sun protesting everything good for people of color and every moment they're out there, they are being exposed. They're exposing themselves to the sunlight, which will eventually kill them. They'll die younger than you will because of the lack of a chemical in their skin that will guarantee you a longer life than they have, than the, they will have, as long as they don't shoot you. What you will die of will not be melanoma. What you will die of will be the ignorance of people who believe that more melanin in your skin makes you less than as a person. It's exactly the opposite. Melanin is, could be your savior. It will be good for you. If you don't have it, it's going to be bad. It'll be bad for me. It'll be bad for some of my grandchildren. For some of them, it'll be all right. Because long story, you don't need to know about what my grandchildren and children are going to look and great grandchildren are going to look like. But what you need to know is melanin is good for those who spend a lot of time in the sun. And that will be all of us in the future. Okay, what's your question? And I'll answer it in 15 minutes. Um, I wanna ask you actually about George Floyd and like your reaction to seeing that. I mean, watching George Floyd being murdered by police, by a police officer was horrifying. And it was a wake up call for so many. For me as a 17 year old black person, my reaction was fear, but yet I wasn't even surprised because I've seen so many Black people get killed just because of their skin color before that. It's traumatic. Wait, 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 it's wait, 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 let me stop you there. Let me stop you there. People that you call Black don't get killed because of their skin color. Skin color is not the problem. Ignorance about skin color is the problem. 
It's time to say to people, people are being killed because of melanaceous people's ignorance about skin color. But every time you say that we are being killed because of the color of our skin, you scare the skin off a whole bunch of melanotic boys. Little boys who hear constantly that there be people are being who look like them are being killed because of the color of their skin, do things like try to bleach their skin. Many little melanotic boys have tried to bleach their skin with Hylex, bleach in order to get their skin to the right color so that they won't be killed because of the color of their skin. It is not, the problem is not skin color. The problem is ignorance about skin color. We have to stop saying it's because of the color of your skin. You can't change the color of your skin and you shouldn't have to. What we can change is the ignorance about skin color, and you do that with real education. What's your question? Now, I see what you mean. I mean, you always do say, if it can be learned, it can be unlearned, which I absolutely definite, no, I definitely believe that's true. So I want to actually ask you now, moving on to your book, you have a book called The Collar in My Pocket, A Collar in My Pocket. Can you Go into detail and tell us about the book. Well, I just started to write little notes to myself, oh, maybe 45 years ago. And about 20 years ago, I found some of those notes and I thought, good Lord, if I would put this in a book, people could read this and they wouldn't have to be in my presence anymore and they wouldn't have to pay me to listen to what I'm saying. And if I don't do this, my offspring, my four kids at that time, won't, they will only hear the ugly things that are said about me and they won't know how this happened or what it's really all about or what it really all means. So at that point, I decided to write a book. So that book is not well done at all. I'm not an author. What it is, is the first part of it is practically a diary that I kept for several years. And then the second part is 20 years later when I decided to put it all in a book because there's stuff in that first part that I had forgotten until I reread it. And I put it all in this book and we gave it to somebody to proofread it. And he said to my daughter, I got so involved in, what, in the subject matter and what was being said that I forgot to do my job to proofread it. So I've, I've taken out some of the errors. So there's still some errors there, Mary. So we had it published. And last week I got a letter from some really angry person who said, Jane Elliott is, she, he sent it to something. Jane Elliott isn't an author. There are over a hundred mistakes in that book. Well, yeah, there are a hundred typos in that book, typographical errors, but there are no mistakes in the subject matter and the way the subject matter is treated in that book. So the book tells people how the exercise started, why it started, what impact it had on nine-year-olds, and then what impact it has had on people in corporations all over the United States. And the film that was made in my classroom, the second, the third time I did that exercise is being used all over the world to teach about the ugliness of discrimination. And also there are in the, that book pages that tell you exactly what you can do to change this situation. What individual people can do to change the racism in themselves, their families, and in their community. Nobody is without power. Every single human being living on the face of the earth has the power to put a stop to racism that is exhibited in their presence. Nobody tells a black joke around me because I'll say, wait just a minute. Let's tell that joke about, and I did this with one of my junior high students. She came in and said, I, I got a Norwegian joke to tell you, Mrs. Ali. I want you to hear this joke. It's really funny. I said, wait, 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 wait. Let's tell this joke about dolmens. How many dolmens does it take to pop corn? And she said, that's not funny. I said, if it isn't funny about dolmens, maybe it isn't funny about the Polish that you're calling Polak or the people that maybe it isn't funny about them. She said, oh, you take all the fun out of life. I said, if your fun depends on making fun of another group of people because of your ignorance, I'll take the fun out of your life. And I'll take that fun out of your life for as long as you're a student in my classroom or for as long as you're a human being on the face of the earth and I'm alive. I'll take that fun out of your life. 
because your fun depends on your ability to mock, deride, and discuss in ugly ways people who don't look like you. Yeah, I'll take the fun out of your life. Is there anything else I can do for you? She said, oh, I just can't stand this. I said, I know you can't sit down. So she sat down and I continued to teach her what I was told what I was hired to teach her, which is literature at the seventh grade, at the eighth grade level. Wow, Jane, I just am really taking in all of what you're saying. I definitely want to be a part of your classes to just really learn about. I know I have um, listened to some of your interviews and I, of course, watched the Blue Eye Brown Eye Experiment to really get a background. But wait, 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 you don't Eye. have a choice. You don't have a choice whether or not to be a part of what I'm doing. I can choose to do or not to do what I'm doing. You don't have a choice because as long as we perpetuate the myth of race, that's how long you don't have a choice in whether you demand freedom or not. George Floyd didn't have a choice. The people who protested the next day, people of all colors, all ages, all genders, all sexual orientations, all religions protested all over the world because they had the choice to do it. George Floyd didn't choose to die. Somebody chose to kill him. And somebody chose to support the person who chose to kill him. Now what we have to do is take away, that cho take away the choice from deciding not to join that group. I'm not going to allow any malinacious person to say to me, or to say to someone else and have it brought back to me, I'm not responsible for what other people do. Oh, yes, we are. If you are one person living in the USA and something ugly is happening to another person because of the color of their skin and the ignorance about skin color, you have the responsibility to go after that person and educate them. You may have to educate them to death, but you have to educate them because you cannot allow those ignorant people to continue to encourage little malinotic boys to try to bleach their skin because they are convinced that skin color is the problem. Your skin color is not the problem. Ignorant reaction to your skin color is the problem. You get rid of ignorance with real education. Anybody who doesn't know about racism in this country today is living with self-imposed ignorance and they choose to remain ignorant. Jane, you have a shirt that says prejudice is an emotional commitment to ignorance. Can you share what this means? What that means, and number one, it's wrong. It should say racial prejudice is an emotional commitment to ignorance because people would rather be ignorant and depend on their skin color, getting them over on whatever problem they have, than learning about the fact that their skin color is not God-given. Their skin color is the result of our body's adaptation to the natural environment over the last 300 to 500,000 years. It's time for us to get over the idea of several different races. The word race came out of France, meaning a, different, a definite group of people. That word, to mean that, came out of France in 1580, only that long ago. Before the four, late 1400s, there was nothing called racism. There were people of different religions, people of different nationalities, people of different faiths, people of different colors, people of different age, ages and stages, but we, there was no racism. People were tri treated unfairly on the basis of people's ignorance about skin color. We learned to be ignorant in the late 1400s and the early 1500s. Those who still believe in the myth of race, and it is a myth, it's a lie. Those who still believe in the lie of race need to go back and from now on, if they're going to use the vocabulary of the 14th and 15th century, they must also use the means of communication and transportation that they used in the 15th century. Now, I doubt very much that all the men that you talk to are going to want to put on knee breeches and powdered wigs in order to be seen as proper males. And I doubt that any of the women that you listen, talk to, or who listen to you, are going to want to wear a corset that makes their waist no more than 14 inches around. Now that'll kill you, but you'll die beautiful according to the standards 
of the 14th and 15th century. I don't want to live in those centuries. I want to drive a car. I want to have electricity. I want to have instant communication. I want to have libraries. I want to have books that I can pick up and that I can copy the ideas in them. I want the things that we have in the 21st century. What I don't want is 14th and 15th century vocabulary, unless you're willing to have the communication and transportation that were used in those two centuries. And I don't think you are. I don't think you're willing to go along with that. I also want to get my hands on a group of people who are presenting and perpetuating the idea of Black Lives Matter. When they came up with that statement, it was beautiful, except that whites could weaponize it because it sounds as though you think that only Black Lives Matter. Now you want to fix that? All you have to do is say Black Lives Matter, comma, two. Black Lives Matter, too. Then white people can't weaponize it because it is including everyone, including Blacks. Does that make sense to you? That makes sense. Just put a comma and the word two after all those banners and then watch white people cringe. Now they're going to have to figure out a way to deal with that. And they can't accuse people who of, of the melanotic, melanotic color group of being racist. You need to realize that when people who are melanotic react unpleasantly to melanaceous people, that isn't racism. That's reacting because you don't have the power yet. That is reacting to the misuse of the power of the melanaceous people. Melanaceous people have got all the power. They've got the power partly because melanotic people allowed them to weaponize a perfectly logical statement. You cannot deal logically with people who have no idea of what constitutes logic. All they know is you're trying to replace us. You will not replace us. Those fools don't realize that all over the world, melanaceous people have been in a numerical minority since time began. That's the way it is. And it will be that way forever, period. Go ahead, make another, say something else and I'll stop you in the middle and say, don't use that word. And you are going to like that, but it's very easy for us to repeat what we have heard over and over and over. And it seems to make sense. The statement, prejudice is emotional ex a commitment to ignorance only makes sense if you put the word racial in front of it. Because I have a prejudice against snakes and against skunks. I see them and I automatically think there's something I don't want to be around. That's a natural prejudice and we should be prejudiced against things that are dangerous. Racial prejudice is, a dis is discriminating against people on the basis of a lie, which was told to us in the 14th and 15th century and has been perpetuated because it worked for 18% of the population of the earth. And that's the 18% of the population that is classified as white. It doesn't work for anyone else except in a negative way. So we've got to get rid of racial prejudice. The rest of your prejudices, you are welcome to. I expect you to have some. Racial prejudice makes no damn sense. And we have proof that it's based on a lie. Okay? Yeah, I see what you mean. What would an ideal world for us all to live in look like to you? What would an ideal world look like to me? Yes. Probably, if we could go back, really go back and watch what happened according to the Bible in the Garden of Eden, and we could all watch what we call God pick up dust out of the Garden of Eden, which in order to be fertile, and it was because there were palm trees and other plants growing in the Garden of Eden. That had to be black dirt because rotted butt vegetation, when it rots, turns either very, very dark brown or black. We could watch that spirit that we call God, which has neither gender nor color, in my estimation, pick up a handful of mud, 
which is either dark brown or black, form it into the first human being, a male. And then once he got that figure made, reach into that, that figure and take out a rib, a piece of bone, which is white because all bone tissue is white because it's made out of calcium. And he made that, that God, I'm gonna stop calling it he, that God made a woman. If we could go back and watch that happen and realize that the first creatures, according to the Bible, made by God were a black man, what we call a black man, and what we call a white woman. If we could go back and see that happening, and say to ourselves, oh, for God's sake, we all came from a mosaic couple. A mosaic is an art form that is new and beautiful and made of many different elements. That's what human beings are. We were new and beautiful and made of many different elements. If we could stop this ignorance and say to ourselves, melanaceous and melanemic people, Melanotic, I'm sorry, melanaceous and melanotic people have been reproducing since day one, according to the Bible. And it worked because God meant for it to work. God didn't separate us. Fallible, ignorant human beings separated us who want to make money because of that separation. And we do. And if you haven't read the book, Rich Thanks to Racism by Freeman, get it and read it. And you'll realize what this is all about. And you'll realize why we perpetuate the myth of several different races in the United States of America. We do it because it's a moneymaker. Racism is an extremely profitable enterprise and you need to realize that. And you need to refuse to go along with being called a word that doesn't describe you in any sense of the word, unless you are evil and savage. And I don't think you're savage and evil. I don't believe that. And I don't think that I'm good and pure. I know me, and I know that doesn't describe me. So you can quit calling me white anytime you want to. And you can call me melanaceous, because I have light brown skin. And I'll call you melanaceous, because that's what you are. And we're members of the same race. And we can make the boys in the business round table extremely uncomfortable because they know that the reason they are millionaires, trillionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires is because of racism and its perpetuation in the United States of America, a country which calls itself le the leaders of the Western world. And we have led in the wrong direction for long enough. Jane, I know that you continue to keep spreading this message. And so I want to ask you what you've been doing during the pandemic. Are you still speaking at events virtually? Yes, I do a virtual event every day, practically every day, and sometimes two or three a day. And I don't do it because I'm so brilliant. I do it because there's an awful fear because of ignorance out there. And people want to know whether... Melanaceous people want to know whether in the future, melanotic people are going to treat us as we have treated them. And I have to assure them that that is not what this is about. If melanotic people wanted to get even with us, they could have done that many, many years ago. They don't want to get even. They want to get equal treatment under the law and they don't want to get equality because we're never going to be equal to one another. We don't have to be equal to one another. In the eyes of God, we are equal to one another. We are all equally valuable. In the eyes of human beings, we are not. I don't have to be your equal in order for me to learn something from you and for you to learn something from me. And the first thing we have to do is learn is there's only one race and these laws against miscegenation, which prevent people of different so-called color groups from mating and reproducing are based on a lie. Eventually, as the hole in the ozone layer gets larger and larger, and more and more sunlight is allowed to enter our environment and damage the skins of those of us who are melanaceous, as long as that goes on, the melanaceous people's 
percentage of the population of the people on the earth is going to shrink because we are going to die younger and younger and younger. Those of you who are melanotic are extremely lucky and people who look like me, people of the melanaceous variety, both male and female are going to be running all over the world trying to find melanotic people to mate with and reproduce with so that their children, their grandchildren and their great grandchildren will live, will live long and happy lives. This is going to solve our problem. We, we, we could just wait because it's going to happen. It's happening right now. Right now, yeah. within 30 years, people, melanaceous people in the United States will have lost their numerical majority in this country. At that point, I don't think melanotic people are want, going to want to get even with us. They know how disturbing it is to the environment, to the social environment, to have people believe in the lie of different races. They know that, they know how it feels to be on the bottom, and they are not going to create that situation for melanaceous people in the future. I think, without, and I am convinced that melanotic people know better than to try to get even. It doesn't make any sense. And it's absolutely stupid to try to get e equality because we'll never be equal. I'll always be equal than you are, e older than you are. And I'm probably never going to forget the letters that I got because a young man on the Roland Martin show, a young melanotic male said to me after I told him to keep his mouth shut and listen to those older people of color that, that were telling him what he needed to do, that he was there to promote Donald Trump. And when they brought me on, they said, Mrs. Elliott, what do you have to say about what you've heard so far? I said, well, I'll tell you what I have to say. Young man, learn to shut your mouth because what you're talking about doesn't make sense and it's not true. You are trumpeting the things you've learned from a man who doesn't like you. And this young man said, here we go again, an old white woman trying to tell us black people what to think. And I just let it go. And later on, I said to him, after another after he had interrupted Roland Martin yet another time, I said, wait a minute, how old are you? I'm 20 years. He is so proud of getting to be 20 years old. He should be, he's very lucky. I said, I was 60 years old when you were born. Do you really think you know more than I do? And the other three gasped. It was like, oh my God, we didn't think of it. But really they were thinking, how dare she try to destroy this young man? I'm not trying to destroy that young man. I'm trying to educate him. He doesn't know what people of my age know, no matter what his color. Somebody who is in fact 67 years younger than I am, does not know as much as I know about living on the face of the earth in this century. That's simply the way it is. So I, by the time they had finished speaking about, oh, 10 minutes later, Roland Martin said, well, I'm 55. And then the three of them began to discuss the fact that all three of them, each of them individually and certainly collectively knew more than that young melanaceous, melanotic man did. And they had the right, they had to respect his right to think he knew everything, but they also had the responsibility to let him know that he didn't know as much as he thought he did but they were willing to help him learn, and I was willing to help him learn, but I will help him learn by agreeing to the ugly things that he has learned from Donald Trump. I will not help him to do that. If he wants to learn the truth, I'll give him a list of books and some printed learning materials that will help him to realize that he doesn't have to act the way he does in order to be accepted. He is running his mouth in a vicious way and demanding power that he isn't going to get as long as people who are of the melanaceous variety, very light skinned variety, have the power to keep him from staying alive. And I said that to him, you need to know that you, the man you're discussing and talking about in such glowing terms wants you dead, either dead or out of the country. And if you don't believe that, then you look, at back at the, look back at the things he's done and read the book, When at Times the Mob is Swayed. And you will realize what this man is doing, why he is doing it, and who he learned, who taught him to do it. He knows exactly 
how to divide and conquer groups of people. And that's what he's doing. And that young man was cooperating with that endeavor. That's a bad endeavor to cooperate with. You bring people together instead of trying to separate them. You bring people of all kinds together instead of trying to separate them. And if you aren't doing that, and I think you are, but that young man is not. That young man doesn't know what he's doing. And he is so ignorant that because the trumpeters have stroked his back and said, you're a fine young man, he will follow them and he will parrot their crap and he will make himself unwelcome, not only to so-called white people, but to his black, black cousins. He will be left hanging there all alone because intelligent people of color won't follow him and intelligent colorless people won't follow him. He's going to be a man without a country, but he's going to be a dead man because Donasaur Chi Rump doesn't like people who look like you and he doesn't like people who look like me. And he really doesn't like people who look like me talking to people who look like you. Okay? Yeah. Jane, this has been a great conversation. My last question for you is how can people find you? Tell us your social media platforms and your website. Just send an email to my website, elliot.blibri at gmail.com. But be assured that if you send me a piece of hate mail, for a while I was collecting them and I was going to write a book and put the hateful mails, on, the hateful pieces of mail on the left side of, of the book and uh, the, the good ones on the right side. And then I thought, you're giving these hateful people a platform. Why would you do that? So I threw away all those hateful mail. And if you're going to send me a vitriolic, angry, abu abusive, and accusative letter, save your time. I'll simply delete it. I will delete it immediately because I don't have to believe it. I don't have to take a physical beating. And I sure as the devil don't have to take a beating over my iPad. I won't do it. So if they want to send something that says they have read the printed materials, the first page of which is a set of typical statements the white folks make. The second page is a set of clarifications of those typical statements, why you ought not to be saying them. The third page is a set of commitments to combat racism, 18 things that you can do in your own environment to deal with your own racism. And racism is an individual problem. People are going to say, well, it's a societal problem. Societies are made up of individuals. And if one individual refuses to go along, pretty soon a whole lot of other individuals will refuse to go along. You do the things that are on that list of commitments to combat racism and you go to the bibliography and read every book that listed that is listed, the title of which is listed under racism. Now, people in the LGBTQ plus group are going to say, well, what about us? We get discriminated against too. Here's what about them. The way we treat people in the LGBTQ plus group, we learn how to do that from the model that is racism. All you have to do is watch what happens to people of color in this country, and that will tell you exactly how to treat people who are of a different gender, sexual orientation. If we can stop racism, then we can say it didn't work against people of color, and it's not going to work against people whose sexual orientation is different from anybody else's. We're not going to tolerate any of it. The most uncomfortable person as far as I, that I have met, persons that I have met while doing this work all over the United States are gays and lesbians of color because their white people won't support them because of the ignorance about skin color. And people of color won't support them because of their ignorance about skin color and because of what they know will happen to them if they support someone who is a member of the LGBTQ plus group. They'll be tarred by the same brush. It's only when we learn that you do not judge people by the amount of a melanin of melanin in their skin, only when we refuse to tolerate that behavior will we turn and say, and now here's another problem we're gonna have to solve. But that problem will be much smaller after we get people educated to rights 
respect, and responsibility. How you live your sex life is your business and nobody else's. How I live mine is my business and nobody else's. What goes on in the bedroom isn't going on in the boardroom. And if it's going on in the boardroom, that's their problem, not yours and not mine. Very true. Very true, Jane. I want to thank you for sharing with us, Jane. Um, I also want to thank everyone for listening. I hope to see you guys at future Race to Speak Up podcasts. If you have any questions about the Race to Speak Up podcast, feel free to contact me at race to speak up at gmail.com. Make sure to follow at Race to Speak Up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for updates on future podcasts. And for Humanity Rising scholarship opportunities, visit our website, www.humanityrising.org. Remember to ask yourself this question. How do you race to speak up? Wait, wait, there's another thing they have to know. Someone has said the only thing necessary for the perpetuation of evil is for good people to do nothing. So that what you are asking people to do now, they were being asked to do 250 years ago. And they have to realize that one person can make a difference. Jesus Christ was one person. Donald Trump is one person. One person can make a difference. And you, because of what you're doing, are standing up there and saying, I believe that what I believe in can make a difference. That's extremely important. And it's an extremely good use of this communication device.